Okay, this is so cool. We just finished performing the anti-play. I'm Marcy and I'm a senior. I've been involved in one-act play competition since the seventh grade. My first role was on the orphan train. I was so nervous, I almost peed my pants. Okay, maybe I did pee my pants. A lot, but luckily I was wearing dark pants and I found that corduroys can be very absorbent. In reality, I don't talk a lot. And when I do, it always comes out wrong. That's why I'm happy with all the walk-on roles I get because I still get to be part of the plays. It's just so, so fun. But that all changed at approximately 3.15 on a Monday afternoon in 1976 when our director, Mr. Sanj, picked a play that was completely out of our comfort zone. This is Mr. Sanj. He's been directing plays forever. He's pretty good at it, but we never tell him that. That's because he likes to tell us how great he is on a daily basis. This is David, he's my boyfriend and he's super cute. Okay, he's not my boyfriend and he's not really super cute, but I wish he was my boyfriend. He gets all the good roles in the place and he's really fun to watch. This is Olivia, she gets all the good roles too. And she's pretty and smart and she's a really great singer and I hate her guts. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not her though, she has a really tough role to play. I kind of feel sorry for her sometimes, but then I don't. This is Mary, but we call her Mouth. She's a national honor student and she's really organized, but she really needs to speak more clearly. I guess I'll spare the details on who everyone else is. You'll learn about them soon enough. I guess you could say that they're all involved in a lot of school activities and they're all really good in school. Well, except for Barb. Barb tends not to care about a lot of things. Oh, and um, oh, that's Percy. He has asthma. Okay, so the play that Mr. Stodge picked this year is called Equus by Paul Schaffer. And it was clear after the first table reading that this year was going to be different. So, what do you think? I know it's not the whole play of Nequus, it's just a cutting, but I feel that it truly captures Peter Schnaufer's spirit and intent. And with my vision, the whole thing will be fabulous. David, you've always got an opinion. Why aren't you speaking? Well, I mean, it's just kind of weird. Why did he blind the horses again? Sound created his own crazy reality that centered around horses. <laughs> then his world crashes when he begins to think the horses don't care about him. He finally snaps and stabs the horse's eyes out. Kind of obvious. I think this might be kind of cool, but mostly I'm just really confused. You're going to have to trust me here. This is a really popular play on Broadway right now. And if we can pull it off, we're guaranteed a trip to state. Isn't that what you all want? Yeah. It just it seems like it's more of an adult play. The main character is a teenager. Aren't you all teenagers? I'm telling you, this is the hot thing right now. And if those judges know anything about theater, they'll love it. Trust me. Now, Olivia and David, are you sure you're comfortable sharing a horse costume part? Yeah, it's cool. What? I have to wear a horse costume? Yes, at the end of the stable, you share one. Share? Like, together? Can I own costume? No, this is a very important part of the play. Look, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I'm sure some, someone else would be more than willing to take your part as the horse's bottom. I'll do it. No, it's fine, but is it against the rules or something? We all went over the state handbook, and there's nothing that says a person can't share a costume. Did you see anything about that getting you disqualified, or about being a horse's bottom? No. What I'm sorry, Mouse. Could you speak more clearly? I have to room. More clearly, please. She said the rules have to uphold the standards of the community. Do you really think the school or anyone else for that matter is going to allow us to shove two students in the same costume? Word. This is art. And besides, we've made it to the state competition for 20 years in a row. I can pretty much do whatever I want. The school and the community expect us to win. The one I play is what keeps this community alive. Then how come no one comes to watch us except our parents, and even then some of them don't show up? Look, if we want to continue winning, we need to show that no one else would dare do. Art is about taking chances. We will be rewarded, trust me. Do you want to go to state? Or what about you, Marcy? Do you want to go to state? My cat's about to have kittens. I think I'm going to name one of them Pippi. <laughs> okay, I've got another meeting to get to because I'm an important person. Have a good night, everyone. Mouse, make sure the lights are off when you leave, please. Oh, and paint this box white. This is great. I get to be the head. What about me? I need to be the butt. 
I'm just not comfortable doing it. Both you fart. Maybe you need to practice it. A lot. I mean, I'd be willing to help if you need it. No, thanks, Percy. There have to be other plays out there. He doesn't care. He's going to go with the trend. Maybe we should just trust him and see where this goes, right? I like to run a piece of soap cloth back and forth between my toes. <laughs> okay, so what I meant to say was that I was with them 100%, but then I thought about the number 100. If you divide it by 10, it is 10, and we have 10 toes. And sometimes when I'm feeling really nervous, I like to run a piece of soap cloth back and forth between my toes. So anyway, rehearsals continued on, and tensions began to rise. Mr. Sanj got more and more demanding, which made us more and more nervous. It all sort of exploded at approximately 4.32 on a Wednesday afternoon in late December 1976. Okay, before we run out of time, let's run the hypnotism scene where Fallon rides nougat for the first time. Let's try running some tech with it, please. Could we get into places a little quicker, please? Good. Let's start with the psychiatrist line. Where are you now? Where are you now? Okay, run that line again and try acting this time. Where are you now? I'm in the meadow, and I can feel the dew on my feet. What's Nougat doing? He's excited. He wants to run. Are you ready to ride? Stop! Where's the chorus? And aren't the floor lights supposed to come on at this point? Hello, up in the booth, are you awake? That's cute. Remember, the cue is he wants to run. Mr. Song? I was wondering if it made more sense if Nugget was in front of Fallon right away. Hold on. I just got a brilliant idea. Winnie, why don't you come forward earlier in the scene? It would make much more sense if we see Nugget at an earlier time. Right. Where are you now? I'm in the meadow, and I can feel the dew on my feet. Uh, line? Right through it. What? Right what? Oh, the line is, what's Nougat doing? You said it before. What's Nougat doing? He's excited. He wants to run. Are you ready to ride? Yes. Go ahead. Climb on. Stop. You need to make this look much more graceful. I don't think that's possible. I can lay down a little bit. OK, let's try that. Any time. Sorry about that. Winnie, are you okay? I can't feel my right leg. Oh, just shake it off. Maybe it would be better if I had something to stand on. Hold on. I just got a brilliant idea. David, why don't you do something to stand on? Are you two finished with that block? Why is this white? Because your color screen is white. Well, I'm not digging it. I want it black. Maybe the box is black. Maybe it's also I don't need a history lesson on my decisions. I want it black, so paint it black! Do you have the metal spike for the blinding scene? Yeah, so far we have this. It's horrible! It looks nothing like a metal spike. We all, the state rules forbid any item that could be used as a potentially dangerous weapon. Do you want us to get disqualified? Try again. And why are you two doing homework on stage? It's good lighting. Here. Heaven forbid, forbid you ever not do an assignment, Cindy Brady. But it's for your class. Can I do the scene sitting? I still can't feel my leg, and it's hard to stand. Yeah, and I'm hungry. Yeah, and I have to pee like a racehorse. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we just call the night, since obviously none of you care about what's going on. So what's the point? I need you all to think about that and start focusing on what's going on. If I close my eyes hard enough, I can see orange spots, and then I open my eyes, and the spots are still there, so I count them. Okay. Wait, did I say that out loud? Yeah. 
This is a challenge, people. We are a small school with limited options. We're not like those big schools with the big sets and the fancy costumes and all those talented people to choose from. We're not like those big schools that have a real theater program where they hire teachers to teach theater all day long. No, we're a small school where we make do with what we have and work with whoever shows up for auditions. That's what makes me so incredibly brilliant. I mean, look at you people. You all think about that. I'll see you tomorrow. Mouse, make sure the lights are off when you leave, okay? Ew, what the heck was that? I think it's extra face now. We better tweet that from now on or it's gonna get worse. I don't know. This whole mounting the horse thing is kind of weird. Really? You're not the one being climbed on. This whole play is weird. It has bad vibes. Yeah, and I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. It's really freaking me out. What, you gonna quit? Maybe. If you quit, I guarantee I'll never cast you in a show again. I have seen it before. What? She said she's seen it before. Mr. Staunch gives no mercy. I don't Maybe. care. I don't care. All he cares about is winning, and that's not why I'm here. Oh, yeah, right. You tried out for a competitive play because you didn't want to win. No, I went out because I wanted to be with my friends. <laughs> oh, no, my inhaler. Yeah, me too. I did it and thrown something out of the box, you know. We got out of the box. Well, I did it because I'm good at it. I actually like the winning part. I can feel my foot now. I like to my finger behind my ear and then smell it. <laughs> I did it because I like theater, but I'm not liking it now. Something needs to change. What are you going to do? You can't change the play. Sure we can. We'll just wait till the actual performance and disqualify ourselves. Why would you do that? We need to take a stand against Mr. Staunch. I've been doing this for six years, and it's the same crap every year. What do you mean? We get forced into doing material beyond what we should be doing. Like, I don't even understand this play. Why can't we do plays about teenagers? Where's our voice? It's right here. That's right, Marcy. And that's why we need to take a stand. And it'll show that we have a say in things, too. It'll be like an inside play. This is a really bad idea. I didn't try for this play to get disqualified on purpose. This will totally ruin my chances for the Triple A award. See, that's a problem, too. This isn't a me activity. It's about all of us together. Exactly. You're pushing us into doing what you want. We don't want this. Actually, I think I do. Brock's <sighs> right. Maybe we should take a stand. <sighs> okay, I'm in. I didn't want to be a horse's bottom anyway. Aw, I did. That's okay. So are we all in or what? Yeah! yeah! I'm so in, I'm actually out. Have you ever felt that way? Like you were way on the outside looking in, but actually looking back at yourself at the same exact time? I feel that way sometimes when I've eaten too many mashed potatoes. Okay, Marcy, everybody, let's huddle up. This is what we're gonna do. So that was when we decided to make the play our own. It was true that performing EQUEST was taking us out of our comfort zone, but to disqualify ourselves was the ultimate in risk taking. We were going to start a revolution, and it started at 8 a.m. on a cold morning in a darkened high school auditorium in January 1977. We were first to perform, so not even all the schools were there yet, and there were only five people in the audience. Three of them were judges, one was our bus driver, and the other was my mom. Mr. Sanch gathered us for the final pep talk. Okay, kids, huddle up. This is the day of reckoning. You need to go out there and show those judges that you can do difficult plays and you can do them well. I've done my best to get you to this point. Now it's yours. Do you understand? This is yours. We understand. This play is ours. Good. Then you've got a show. Now get out there and win that competition. OK, get away from me. Good morning, Mr. Staunch. It's good to see you again. And you as well, Gus. I like what you've done with the trophy this year. Come now, Mr. Staunch, you know flatteries are going to help you win this competition. Then I guess I'll just have to have a good show. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> so
So are we ready to begin? Of course. Great. As you know, you'll have 10 minutes to set the stage. If you do not set the stage on time, you will be disqualified. You may begin now. He said go, guys. Let's go. What is going on? Set these up the right way. Have you all gone deaf? Set up the stage the way you're supposed to. We're done. This is no time to be joking around. Move it! This is not with all due respect. We won't be setting stage on time. What? First of all, we will be set up time that didn't qualify. That's very funny. Let's go! We're serious. Why would you do this? We're taking a stand against your play because we believe it has ruined what theater should be. Really? And what should it be? It should be something we all believe in. Yeah! yeah. It should be something that reflects our own lives. Yeah. yeah! And it should be fun and there should be no rule. Yeah. yeah! That's what the spring musical is for. This is about winning. See, that's your problem. We believe you've become too obsessed with winning. Excuse me, children. You're currently at five minutes. Thanks, Gus. We're actually done. That's, that's your set? Yes, I'm doing something a little different this year. Okay. We'll still stay on schedule. You'll start in approximately four minutes and 32 seconds. Thanks, Gus. Move it. I don't know what's going on, but it's going to stop now. You can set the stage during the doctor's opening monologue. The set is going to stay as it is. OK, what is this about? Is this for not getting the lead? I can give you the lead in the musical. I don't want the lead. I want you to realize what you've done. What I've done is win this competition for 20 years in a row, and, and you're going to throw it all away. What you've done is ignore all the real successes we've accomplished. Ha! Like what? I stopped eating my own boogers. I train myself to think they taste like rotten fish eggs instead of peppermint. <laughs> And we've come together as a group. Don't you see this? I guess I do see those things, but why didn't you guys talk to me about this earlier? You wouldn't have listened. Well, I'm listening now. So do you understand what we're saying? Yes, maybe I do focus too much on the win, but I don't want to lose. Yeah, we know. Maybe I have lost sight of the process, but I know you guys can do the show. You have the talent to make it happen. Maybe so, but this plays at us. Well, I'm the director, and I know what I'm doing. You've been at State long enough to know that it's trendy and popular to do cuttings from adult-based plays. But can't we start a new trend? I thought theater was an evolving art form. How can it change if we keep doing the same plays over and over again? Well, what would you suggest we do instead? You know, maybe we could do a play about teenagers. You know, something that we could all relate to. Ha! You can't do a show about teenagers at a high school level. You'd never win anything. See, you go right back to the whole winning thing. Isn't it, wouldn't it be cool if we could do something daring? You said art was about taking chances, right? Yes. So let us make a statement. Let us disqualify ourselves on purpose to show that we're not going to play the norm anymore. It'll be like an anti-play. Hmm, the anti-play. Children. 30 seconds before I go on. You should all probably get into your places. Hold on. I just got a brilliant idea. What if we break all the rules and disqualify ourselves? Really? Yes, it'll be like the anti-play. It might just be crazy enough to win, and if anyone can pull it off, it'll be me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 15 seconds. You heard him. Get into places. Do what you need to do. Go! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Section 1A subsection finals. I am your contest manager for the day. Not only do I introduce the shows, but I am the official timer, and I make sure that all the rules are obeyed and followed. For those of you in the audience who are unaware of these rules, I will quickly give you a synopsis. Going over the setup time and performance time is a disqualification. Use of strobe lights, dead animals, or fog is a disqualification. Use of real food that may make a mess on stage is a disqualification. 
with all that out of the way, let's have some fun. Our first play for the day is Schmuck Muss by Peter Shave Ear. it began. I was so nervous. My throat went dry and I couldn't swallow. And plus, I was feeling a little hoarse. <laughs> it was a good thing I didn't have any lines, but the further we went along, I started making these weird coughing noises. We ran the play normal until we hit the hypnotism scene. Where are you now? I'm in the meadow, and I can feel the dew on my feet. It's kind of cold. Well, why don't you start a fire and get warm? Well, what should I burn? Well, if there's a pile of junk right behind you. <gasps> oh, I can't believe I'm about to do this. It's about taking a chance, right? Right. Whoa. <laughs> it's almost like a campfire, isn't it? Fire, fire, fire! It's almost like a campfire, isn't it? Yep, and you know what we need at a campfire? Mushmallows! Mushmallows! Two eat ones! Uh, these are stale. This fire's getting a bit out of control. Don't you think we should put it out now? Well, we don't have any water, whatever we do. I got an idea. <laughs> Based on David's actions, I knew there was no going back. If we were going to create the anti-play, we were going to go all the way. Well, fire's out. Let's go ride some horses. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna work. Alan, I'm supposed to be kissing in the stable. I brought on my dad's ancient buggy so in case you want to find some horses later. An ancient Viking sword? That looks really sharp. <laughs> That's right. This is a real weapon. Well, should we get started? I think I have a better idea. What's that, Jill-O? Let's have a food fight and spaghetti. That's great. Just pour it all over the place. <clears throat> That was it. We had disqualified ourselves in every possible way and had fun doing it. We even had David streaking his undies across the stage. And after a spontaneous rendition of a song from Oklahoma, we reached the end. And that is our found decided to blind us with an ancient Viking sword. <coughs> Here, coughing grass, why don't you eat something? Um, I'd prefer a drink of water, but considering the situation, this will have to do. <coughs> um, it appears that I have vomited on the stage floor. <laughs> well, Fallon, now that you've cheered, I think I've managed to learn a few things about myself as well. And what's that? Well, I would much rather have one of my colleagues say it instead. It appears that we've run over time. Yeah! That was it, the rebellion. We had done it, the anti-play. Standing there, we knew our voice had been heard. And even though we had disqualified ourselves in every possible way, there was still a little hope that maybe the judges understood. And with Mr. Tron taking credit for all of it, maybe we would be sent to the next level, the next level to make our point again. It was, after all, about taking chances. The biggest question was, would we be rewarded?
excuse me. Is this where the additions are? I hope I'm not early. Yeah, you'll have to come back later. Oh, okay. Thank you. Ugh, actors. Hello, I'm here for the audition. I'm a little early. I hope you don't mind. When's your audition time? Uh, 1.57. A.M. or P.M.? 1.57 P.M. You're early. What time is it? 1.56 P.M. So please wait outside. But I... Please wait outside. <coughs> sure. Thank you. Next! Send in the next victim, I mean actor, please. Next. Hi, I was the next. Just head out to center stage and don't touch anything. Sure. That's far enough. Hi, my name no is- No contact, please. Sure. Please don't stand on the spike tape. What spike tape? Please don't stand on the tape. But I- Off the tape. It's for our current production. What current production? It's a blank stage. It's a Beckett piece. Ah, uh, I love waiting for Godot. Off you the tape. I'm sorry, I just don't see any tape. It's there. Where? In your mind. Huh? Just face straight out and address the director sitting in the back of the theater. Okay. Take a step stage right. That's house right. You're right. You're right. Hello there. Sorry, I'm just a little bit nervous. You see, this is my first audition. Well, I've chosen a classic. I'm sure you've heard of it before. The monologue is entitled The Applesauce Pig. You have two minutes. What's that? You have one minute and 55 seconds. I'm sorry, where's that coming from? Over here. Over where? Stage right. That's house right? Is this a joke or something? No, I don't joke. And you're standing on spike tape. Excuse me? You're standing on tape. Who are you? Are you the same lady? You have one minute. One minute until what? Please don't stand on the spike tape. Sorry. 55 seconds. Just tell me who you are. I'm the stage manager. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you. My you name have 40 seconds. 40 seconds until what? Your piece. Due to other performers running over time, we're a bit behind schedule. You have 30 seconds for your piece. Oh, well, then I better hurry. <clears throat> Again, this is a monologue entitled The Applesauce Pig. As soon as I walked in the deli, I knew there was trouble. Thank you. Uh, thanks? If you could please wait outside and don't step on the tape. Next. Hi, do you have a headshot and resume? Hello, my name is the artist formerly known as Question Mark, and I believe in the art of acting through the theatrical sphere of peer movement. Uh, interesting perspective. Do you have a classical piece prepared? is entitled The Great Thing. Uh, great, <laughs> whenever you're ready. <laughs> that was interesting. Since we have some extra time, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Right. Well, perhaps we should skip the interview and just have you wait outside. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Next, please. Next. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Miss Julianne Rice. Jules, just Jules. What will you be doing for us today, Miss Rise? I prepared a song to sing today. Do you need an accompanist? No, just a piano player. Right. Since we're squeezing you in during break, 
Our accompanist is at lunch. Could you please sing it a cappella? I don't know that one, but I could do it without any music. <laughs> um, okay, whenever you're ready. I just need a moment to get my mind straight. You need a lot more than that. Whoa. What was that? Nothing, <laughs> whenever you're ready. La, 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 la. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, do you have a classical piece prepared? Yes, I do. Can we see it? See what? The monologue. I don't think you can see it, but you can hear it. Then we would like to hear it whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. La 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 la. Oh, oh, ma, ma, oh. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here, here, my friends, is my handle, and here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout, 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 shout. If you can't stand the heat, then just tip me over and pour me out. I'm a clever teapot, mister. Yes, it's true. And here's an example of what I can do. Jazz hands, jazz hands, fuss say, fuss say, jazz hands. I can change my handle to a spout. <laughs> Just tip me over and pour me out. Pour me out. Pour me out. That was interesting. Thank you. I guess for better judgment, the director would like for me to ask you a few questions. Great. So it says here on your resume that you did a play on Broadway? Yes, I did a play on Broadway. New York is an amazing city. Yeah, I'd like to go there one day. Go there? You just said you were on Broadway. Oh, I was. Broadway and Pine. Broadway and Pine? Yes, the, compu the Topeka Community Theater on Broadway and Pine. The Topeka Community Theater. That's amazing. Could you please just go away? Go away? Could you please just wait outside? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. The director is ready whenever you are. I'm just gonna take a quick break. If you need anything, I'll be right back. Cheers and hello. My name is M.R. Irving. Today, I will be performing the part of Egot the Ostrich Egg from a play, If a Shrimp Cocktail Can Talk, Why Do We Have a Bar for Papa? <laughs> mamba, Mamba, Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Lemonades and enemies, lemonades and enemies. Our enemies, lemonades and enemies. Black bugs blood, tubular aluminum, tubular aluminum, tubular aluminum. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'll start again. Thank you, thank you. Unique New York, eek New York, unique New York. Salt shakers and baby makers, salt shakers and baby makers. Let us make cinnamon for our enemies, aluminum. The moon is your soil now. The moon. It moves like a Siberian ibex across the crimson flame of the sun. The marshmallow in the sky is like a woman's heart. You pull, and you tug, and you cry, and then laugh. What is hard? Oatmeal is lumpy, and shrimp. Shrimp, my friends, is brittle. Brittle, brittle, brittle. It snaps in a hand like a stalk of celery rising above the earth. And then, it's gone. Scene. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, no need for applause, no need for applause, really, thank you. And no, it's not written by Sam Shepard. Dove, you frightened me. I should. I thought you thought your audition piece was absolutely wonderful. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. I would love to sit and chat, absolutely. Tea time and all that, yes. I've actually been performing around the UK recently. Several Finnish festivals and all that, in fact. That's 
really most interesting. M.R. Irving. Mr. Irving, do you have a first name? I do. What is it? Macbeth. What are you doing? I'm telling you my name. I don't have time for games, mister. Tell me your first name. Macbeth. Stop saying that. Don't you know it's bad luck to say the name of the play in the theater? You asked for my name, and that's what the M stands for. My parents were slaves to the theater, but everybody just calls me Mac. Great, Mac. Well, Mac, don't call us, we'll call you. And don't forget to write and all that, and... It seems as if the director would like for you to stay for callbacks. Fantastic! Just wait right here. If I could get the four of you to line up from left to right, please. Your left or my left? Your left, my right. Right. First, can I have Kelly Peterson? Next to Kelly, can I have Miss Julianne Rise? Just Jules. Miss Rise, great. Next, can I have the artist formerly known as Question Mark? And finally, M.R. Irving. That's Macbeth. <laughs> great. Now, could you all please take a step downstage? Uh, you're downstage or my downstage? Just take a step forward. Fantastic. Robin, on behalf of myself and the director, I'd like to welcome you to callbacks. So we made the callback list? Wow. It was a short list. Here are your scripts. Please take a look at them. Hi. Are you talking to me? Yes. Nobody ever talks to me. You're the first person that's ever said hello to me, so thank you. Thank you so much. Mike, you're totally welcome. And it's nice to meet you, too. I'm Jules. It's nice to meet you, Jules. It's rare to have a conver... Conver... Conversation? Yes, that's what it's called. You see, every night I sit in darkness just waiting for my cues. The only time anyone ever talks to me is if they want something. Robin, could you carry this set piece? Robin, are the prop set? Robin, are the costumes ordered? Or, hey, Robin, can you fly the scenery? Robin, can you adjust those lights? Or, hey, Robin, can you fix the sound system? Or, sometimes it's just, hey, Robin, can you light a candle and fix some coffee for me? It's just Robin this, Robin that, all day and all night. Robin, can you turn it on? Go! Robin, can you turn it on? Go! Robin, can you turn it on? Go! Robin, 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 Robin! Yes, Your Excellency? Get back to work. Yes, Your Excellency. I'll see you guys around. Bye. Great. Now, could you all please take a look at page... 11? If you could all please take a look at page 11. The director is taking a quick break. This would be a great time for you to rehearse. Miss Rise, could you please read the part of Medea? Is Medea the lead? The play is called Medea. Do I get my own dressing room? Mac, could you please read the part of Jason? It's the part I was born to play. Kelly, could you please read the part of the chorus leader? Sure. And you, could you please read the play the part of the chorus? If you could just do an interpretive dance or whatever it is that you do, that'd be great. Take a moment whenever you're ready. <laughs> Whither can I turn me now? To my father's house, to my own country, which I for thee deserted to come hither, to the hapless daughters of Peleus. A glad welcome, would I trow, would they give me in their home whose father's death I compass? My case stands even thus. I am become the bitter foe to those of my own home. And those whom I need, nor have I wronged, I have made my enemies to pleasure thee. Wherefore, to reward me for this, thou hast made me doubtly bliss in the eyes of many wife and Pelis, and in thee I own a peerless and trusty lord. Oh, woe is me, if indeed I shall be cast forth in exile from the land without one friend, one lone woman with her babes forlorn. Yea, I find reproach in thee in thy bridal hour that thy children and the wife who saved thy life are beggars and that bond. Oh, Zeus. Why hast thou granted man clear signs to know the sham and gold, while on man's brow no brand is stamped whereby to gauge the villain's heart? There is something terrible in pastel cure, when quarrels arise twixt those who are near and dear, when in excel in pastel limits, love doth comes, he brings not glory or rebuke to man. But if the Cypron queen in moderate might approach, no goddess is so full of charm as she. Never, oh never, lady mine, discharge at me from thy golden bow, a shaft invincible in passion's venom dipped. <clears throat> yes. Then must I know, it seems to an oratory, and like a good helmsman on a ship with close reef sails, whether that wearisome tum of thine. Now, I believe, since that wilt exaggerate thy favors, that to Capri, alone of gods and men, I owe the safety of my voyage. Thou hast a subtle wit enough, yet were it a hateful be thing, 
me to say that the love God constrained thee by his restless shaft to save my life. However, I will not reckon this too nicely. Twice kindly done, however, thou didst serve me. Yet for my safety hast thou received more than ever thou gravest, as I will show. Give me no gold within my halls, and no skill to sing a fairer strain than Orpheus ever sang, unless there my fame will be spread abroad. O oh, grim look night, O oh, night with hue so black, O oh, night in ever aught when day is naught, O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, alack, alack. I fear thy thisbe's promise is forgot, and O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through thine eyes. Stop! Eye. You're not following the script. What part are you reading? Bottom. Bottom? Bottom, from A Midsummer's Night Dream. I found this part of the play rather depressing, so I thought I would try to liven things up. We are doing Medea. Is this a variety show? No, this is Medea. Never heard of it. You haven't read the play? I don't read books. What do you read? Um, mag magazines, billboards, street lights. Did you say street lights? Medea is a Greek drama. It's a play. What happens to Midi? Medea? Sure, I mean, what kind of drama does she have? Does she break a nail? Break up with her boyfriend? What? She drowns her three children, is wanted, for, is wanted for the crime, all while her husband is stripped of his eternal soul. Bummer. Yes, a bummer. You people are unbelievable. You know, you don't have to treat us this way. I mean, who do you think you are anyway? <laughs> who do I think I am? I'll tell you who I am. I'm the reason that this production stays on track, under budget, and right on time. My only social life is with my nine cats, six goldfish, and one turtle whom I never see. My only form of entertainment is watching infomercials at 3 o'clock in the morning because that's when I get home from picking up your chocolate donuts that you've managed to scatter about the stage as you all lazily rehearse. I sit in the back of the theater waiting for the director to keel over so I could use my dictator-like authority in the most demeaning manner possible. Now I can make or break you because I am the darkest secret in the corner of a full house. I am a fly on the wall. I am Pablo Picasso, Benjamin Franklin, and Nora Jones, beautifully composed one, right-brained virtuoso. I make order of the unimaginable art of live theater, and there is no one, no one on earth as organized as me. I am the one, I am the only, I'm the stage manager. I just meant like, what's your name? Oh, Susie. Susie, right, wonderful, wonderful name, Susie. You know, as a young lad growing up in Kensington, I knew a woman, I knew a woman by the name Suzanne M. Friedman, who I will say I did have a terrible. Is table. that real? Excuse me. Your accent. Pardon? Where did you say you were from again? England, of course. Say, the children ran home from the conservatory. The children ran home from the conservatory. Conservatory, observatory. Conservatory, observatory. You don't run the Tory together. What? You say conservatory, observatory. That doesn't mean anything. Well, actually it does. You see, the northern part of England, which is occupied by the Scots and the Welsh, have a very distinct accent. Your accent doesn't sound very authentic to me. I've seen every Hugh Grant movie, and you definitely don't sound like him. You know, you may be onto something here. Are you telling me that I'm not from England? <laughs> what have you got to hide? Not a thing. Good. Good. Advertisement. Advertisement. Potato. Potato. Tomato. Tomato. Aluminum. Aluminium. Truck. Lorry. Toilet. Blue. Baseball. Cricket. Star Trek. Thunderbirds. You said Sasquatch. How do you know what he's saying? I speak mime. I took two years in high school, duh. Loch Ness Monster. Twilight Zone. Terry Sadless. Patrick Stewart. Baywatch. Spice Girls. HBO, cable TV, digital TV. BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three. French fries. Chips. Meat and potatoes. Bangers and mash. Pigs in a blanket. Toad in a hole. Good tasting English food. Haggis. Aha! Haggis is the most disgusting food ever created. What's haggis? A stuffed sausage with all of the body parts in Sweeney Todd. Oh. <laughs> You're fake. All right, I'm a fake. I'm from New York. You got me. Are you happy now? So, why use the accent? Because growing up in the Bronx, no one ever listened to you unless you're from somewhere else. You know, as a kid, I was kind of a loner. I uh, used to watch a lot of TV. And then one day, my uncle, God rest his soul, he took me down to that taping of that sitcom, uh, My Life is a Geek Down in Manhattan. I remember that show. All those crazy characters, Lance McCarish, John Grady. Hey, what's up to Chief for making nice cows on for you? Hey, Papa Bear, hey, Papa Bear. I guess I started to lose myself in that TV show. I wanted to be those characters because I associated with them. A shy, chubby kid who wanted to make people laugh. And then one day I saw this beautiful purple flower in my mother's garden. Wait a second. My Life as a Geek was set in Manhattan? 
but it was filmed in Los Angeles. There's no way you could have gone to any filmings in Manhattan because there weren't any. All right, I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> I lived in a middle class family with no internal problems. My, the, my mother was in the PTA and I flossed daily. I rented a dialect tape so I would sound more exotic. Why? Why? Because you go into a theater with an English accent and everybody thinks you're Kenneth Branagh. Well, you certainly don't look like Kenneth Cole. Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. It works, believe me. I actually have a reputation. As a fake? Oh, come on. Who isn't a fake in this business? Isn't that why we're all here? To wear a mask and to become somebody else? I kind of like that. You lifted that from Eric Bentley. Look, I sincerely apologize. Uh, really, I do. I I'm just trying to find some decent work is all. I uh, Really, I'll do anything. Please, please. Anything? Anything you need. You want me to what? On stage? With the plastic camel? You know, I've heard a lot of crazy things in this business, and I go to bed at night thinking a lot of strange things about this place. Is it for art's sake? Is truth reality? Is David Hasselhoff even really actually an actor? I don't know, but I do know this. I will never, ever, if I was the last actor in the M33 galaxy, would I ever, ever tech. Hi, I'm here for the auditions. I hope I'm not late. Uh, actors! Something for everyone, a comedy tonight. Something appealing, something appalling. Something for everyone, a comedy tonight. Nothing with kings, nothing with crowns. Bring on the lovers, liars, and clowns. All situations, complications. Nothing for catches or polite. Tragedy. Tomorrow, comedy tonight. Oh, boy. 